is going on, everybody? We are back. This is episode 290 of the Dark Windows podcast. We are just staring 300 right down the fucking barrel, man. That's 10 away. Yeah. And according to the uh, the poll, it looks like we are probably doing unit 731 for that. So well, I think half people just don't even, you know, aren't, aren't voting. Well, I mean, there's, we've only got like 19 votes on the whole thing, so. Um, Fuckers. Oh, no, I oh. lied. We've got uh, 21. We have 11 for Unit 731 and 10 for Vlad. So oh. get out there and let your fucking voices be heard. Yeah. The thing is, right at the very top of the, the Facebook page, it's pinned there. You can't miss it. So just, you know, go click on one of them. Let's go, you lazy um, bastard. I mean, <laughs> we, we, do have a, we do have one vote for the ATF three-parter of Ruby at Ridge, Waco, and OKC, though. So oh. like, that's a dark horse I can get behind. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Get some good sure. old fashioned American terrorism. Damn right, mister. Uh, it, it's really not terrorism if you connect a three letter agency to it, then it's, yeah, it's true. quote unquote justice. So that's, that's um, true once yeah. again. 100% accurate. Yeah. But anyway, Kevin, you are we're back. Uh, uh, we're back for part two. Finishing up some uh, some Brits that we've already been fucking spoken to about how you pronounce things. Listen, Ilsington or whatever the fuck it is, I don't care. I said Islington or something whatever. like that. <laughs> it, 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 it's supposed to be an Islington or something. I don't know. You know what, Danny? I don't, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, it's also Leicester, not Leicestershire. So yeah, um, you can hang out for a few minutes. <laughs> that look it was uh, like, uh, "What's up, homie?" Hey. Anyway, so, uh, so Kevin, yes, last week we talked about some geezers. Last week we did. We took all about all the geezers. So, <clears throat> so last week we left off with the crew having to call in, call it early night because their jack was not strong enough to move the cabinet out of the way. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yes. Like you blame him. That's why you <laughs> ran away. Here, go get mommy. Come on. Go get her. I won't say it again. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway. So, uh, so now let's move on to Friday night or it's Saturday. I don't know. There, it's conflicting. I, I don't know how like it's so misconstrued. But Friday thinking, night, Saturday morning kind of thing. Something like that. So, Jesus. Like, so we're going to move on to Friday night of this daring heist. The crew minus reader, one of the, you know, the the center points of this, uh, would actually come back. Everybody but him would come back to the building. No, why to, didn't he come back? I don't know. It never, ever said why he – I never could find anything that said why he could, didn't come back. Hmm. So I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I think it could have been health health reasons. Mm. Well, yeah, these guys were all fucking, like, in their 90s, so. Well, close to it um so they're gonna come back and complete the task of pushing the cabinet out of the way so that they could commence with robbing the boxes uh earlier in the day jones and collins uh and they were riding around in jones's white mercedes oh yes it was a high class mercedes a g something something i don't know even though, if, like, you go to Europe and Mercedes is basically like a, like having a, a Chevy or a Ford here. It's not a big deal like it is here. I guess. I don't know. Um, uh, it's like the equivalent of a fucking Chevy Cobalt. <laughs> okay. You see them everywhere. Like, ah, whatever. It's just Mercedes. Who cares? Okay. So. I, I don't know. I don't really know, like, if it's still... I think I figured it would still be, like, high class because <laughs> of the price. I will give them credit, though. They at least have the common decency to make them diesel, so. Uh, true. You know. Because, well, the price of Petro is, like, outrageous per liter. Yeah. Um, but we're the problem, so that's why we all have to have electric cars over here. Yeah. Which, by the way, fuck electric cars. I've been in one for two days, and I already hate it. I picked one up Saturday when I dropped my truck off. It was at 100% charge with a 139-mile range. I drove it home. I drove it back into Rutland the next day. I drove it home, and then I drove it to work today. And I was at 30 miles when I pulled into the, the parking lot this morning. I did not drive 100 miles. 
over the course of two days. Okay. But because you're running the air conditioner. What, what are you? T- what, so what are you tr- getting at? Because I, I guess I didn't follow. Uh, electric cars are like super fucked. There's no point in them yet. The technology is like way. So the- are you trying to say the battery was pretty much dead? Uh, it's it's charging in my backyard right now. Okay, because I because you didn't you you left out that point. So I'm going. Well, you said it was at a hundred percent. You got here for a hundred something miles. Okay. Yeah. And then you went from here to Rotland back from Rotland. And then I've made three trips to Rutland. It's 12 miles each way. Yeah. And then you went back to Rutland and then back here. Yeah. And then that's where you kind of, then you were like, and then I said, I'm I'm down to like, I was down to like 30 miles when I pulled into the, the driveway at work today. Then I had to try on the fucking charger. Uh, Oh, I thought you said you only went 30 miles. Oh no, 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 no. So it went from 30 miles. Like, so 30%. Okay. When I left work today to come home. I was at 20% when I got here, and it's now on the charger in the backyard. So when I go out to check it tonight, uh, later tonight, it'll pro- probably be up to, like, 40%. Mm. Electric cars are gay. Anyway, continue. It might be up more than that. No, not not on a 110. No. Like, well, a, a full to get a full charge from zero on that leaf off of your house is, like, 19 hours uninterrupted. You'd have to have a. Uh, you have to have 240, 240. conversion, but yeah. with a one ten like that, it's like nineteen hours uninterrupted uh. for a full charge. Which is anyway. Well, you can put it on at work too. No, uh, I can't. I've well. got nowhere to plug it in. <laughs> so, oh. yeah. Well, all right. I've seen two dudes kiss, and it wasn't as gay as that car. Mm. Uh, anyway. Back from that sidetrack, mm-hmm. uh, they're in, they're in, uh, so they're in Jones's Mercedes, and they went on a little bit of a drive to the equipment store. They had to purchase a new, new piece of equipment, which the new piece of equipment was the new jack. Okay, now they would drive uh, by the by the safety deposit location, and just to kind of like make sure that the cops, you know, hadn't been alerted. To the fact that the, they had been there the night before, um, to uh, you know commit this 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 lovely little heist. Yep. Um, and you know they found that you know nothing was going on, and this is all known. Um, this is all known information because after the fact that you know they were uh, that the <clears throat> the. The safety deposit, you know, people had come in and found that, hey, you know, they had been broken into. Right. Things, you know, cops were called and things were looked at, such as the CCTV footage. Um, the same footage that I mentioned last week that showed the men um, walking down and then, you know, uh, a ve- the vehicle driving up through. So they would actually um, see the footage of... I'm sorry, it was Collins Mercedes, not Jones, sorry. Um his white Mercedes driving by. Okay, by the area. Okay. And, they, and um Yeah, it was kinda like interesting. They're like, okay. So now like I said, that evening the men had gathered except for the reader. Um they would get the cabinet moved and commence with going through the safety deposit boxes they would end up opening um and take the goods of 73 only 73 of the 999 not thousand but 999 boxes so did they have specific ones they were after because they knew it was in them they just kind of winging it winged it oh uh the total value of all of the goods inside um of all the boxes was uh, estimated to be roughly 49 million pounds of what they took or like all of them combined total the 999 no 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 73 they only took 73 okay that's where i was confused i didn't know uh, what 999 the, so the value of what they took was, was of the 73 boxes okay. okay okay when the cops arrived that morning the, the i'm sorry the monday morning because this you know 
they would walk out on Sunday morning or Saturday morning, you know, late morning, early morning, scot free. Um, they the they would arrive and they would begin their you know their procedures right off, all the proper procedures. But the crew were so damn careful that they left no evidence, nothing That's at all. That's good. When the CCTV TV footage was actually reviewed, uh, a det- detective noticed um, the white Mercedes. Okay. And he was like, oh, um, hmm. Yeah, this is Jones's Mercedes. I know who this guy is. And it was a young detective that knew mm-hmm. it, you know. Cursey. And then he sees Collins in the Mercedes as well. So they knew, knew who that was. Um, you know, they kind of like the, the guy's spidey sense kind of like fucking went, boom. Yeah. You know, um, uh, <clears throat> Now, this a bit, little bit of information would actually lead to uh, them to look the, for video evidence of the same car in other places, um, you know, around the area of London. And they would actually see the car in footage from the first night of the heist um, in that area. Right. Okay. The ANPR, which is the Automatic Number Plate uh, Retrieval System. Got the information of the owner, and they were able to actually see about the other place the cars had had actually been from there. I still because... don't like those things. Well, it's fucking plate readers. Yeah, you know, they're just used for extortion purposes for the most part. Yeah, you know. But in this case, it wasn't. Yeah, th- this one time. Yeah. It's usually like, oh hey, we thought we can get this plate. Hmm. He hasn't registered his vehicle. Let's go to his house and write him a ticket for not having it registered. Because we're gonna make him pay. We're gonna make him pay extortion for the fact that he didn't pay his extortion fee on his vehicle already. Yeah, you know. So they, they looked to see if it was actually other places, and turns out they saw that it was outside of the equipment store. Oh wow! And uh. So then this also meant that they were, you know, able to locate Collins' residence. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'd, then they would start to follow Collins, and this was when uh, they would see Jones and Collins together. So they're like, you know, well, two and two, you know, Collins visited the place. Hmm, okay. Yeah. Uh, Jones was there because his car was there. Hmm. Something's fishy here. These mm-hmm. two must be in cahoots somehow. Now, the seeing the two of them together would make detectives look into Jones as well. And when they had find out that Jones had been at the shop, like I said, oh, with his white car, you know, they're like, okay. Um, they would then look at both their phone records, and they would find that they had both spoken to each other and to Terry Perkins. Yeah. Uh, before the heist, which is now man number three that's on their radar. Uh, and then this would then lead the cops finding that all three men had been meeting up with a uh, reader before the heist. Okay. okay. So there's your fourth man. They're like, uh, okay, all right, here we go. So with this flow of information coming in to them, the detectives felt that they – uh, had found the ringleaders of the heist. While surveilling Perkins, they uh, would find him meeting with Reader and showing him um, on his computer what Reader had missed out on that, you know, the night of the heist. Yeah. The second night. Um, and while they're under surveillance, they would actually be heard boasting about how they actually would get into the vault. You know, a bunch of old men. Yeah, they don't yeah. really realize that you know. Hey, you just you know committed a a pretty good crime. You probably should sh- shut up and not talk about it for a while, or you know, figure out who's around you, and then uh, you know, then you could go from there. But nah, you know, they don't think anything of it. No. Um, they would also make the mistake of using their cell own cell phones to make calls uh. to each other. Yeah, that's where they fucked up. Yeah. And to the shops to get the the proper tools that they needed for the heist. 
they they also <laughs> would use their computers and not erase the history on them, which is something that I think either they overlooked or just didn't realize it would uh, be something that they could be, you know, found out about and used against them yep. later on down the road. So now we're going to jump ahead because it takes you know six weeks for all the collection of data information um, to come together. And also they had to wait for in this six weeks, they're you know collecting all this. They had to wait for the men to get back together. Okay. Because, well, you got to, you know, get back together to divide those spoils from, you know. And once they got back together, the police were like, okay, we can make our move now because we know what they're doing. Correct. Because so, they've literally told us. Yeah. They make their move and they raid the homes of each of the men. Uh, they would find millions of pounds of goods in the homes of See, the ringleaders. See, that's where you fucked up. You don't stash it at home. Yeah. Now, while watching a video on this, I learned that in one of the homes, they would find uh, one of those books, you know, you know, one of those uh, uh, books, blank, whatever, for dummies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the version that the police would find was forensics for dummies. Okay. So, you know, they, they uh, brushed up. On, so that Makes they could sense. get caught. Uh, when I heard this, I kind of got a little bit of a chuckle because I was like, they had a forensics for dummies thing. I was like, that's kind of funny. You know? Right. Uh, they also find some tools uh, that were used. One of the best lines that I heard while watching the video on this crime was how they describe these men. The person that said it was Peter Spindle. Uh, Spindler, sorry. Uh, he was the head of Met's specialist uh, crime investigation team. Uh, this is what he had to say. And actually, this was uh, in the film footage I watched on this. And it actually turns out it's in your, your book that you gave me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and the quote is this. Quote, they were, an analog, they were analog criminals operating in a digital world. They lacked the knowledge to defeat the digital detectives. Okay. So I'm like, okay, that's uh, that's kind of uh, it's kind of cool. Yeah, kind of cool way to describe, you know, a bunch of old fogies that you know think that what they did, you know, thirty, forty years ago would uh, still be okay to uh, do today, and then they wouldn't probably get caught. Now all the men would uh, be arrested except for Seed known as Basil because they didn't know who he really right, was. Right, he was he was our mystery man from yeah. the first one. Um so uh, a 20,000 pound reward was actually issued for inf information on Basil and the remaining stolen goods. The uh, these arrests would uh, happen in 2016. Six men in total arrested the, the six men in total arrested would be Brian Reeder, uh John Collins, Carl Wood, Daniel Jones, Hugh Doyle, and William Lincoln. Uh, John Collins, I'm sorry, yeah, all, uh, start again. Uh, three years later, Seed would actually finally be caught and arrested at his home. Okay, so this is 2019, mm -hmm. 1819. Um, he, here is the breakdown of actually the sentencing of each man and what's kind of like happening with them as we speak. Okay. All right. So Brian Reeder was sentenced to six years and three months in prison for on March 21st of 2016. He would be released from prison in July, 2018 after serving over three years. Uh, he would get out because he suffered from prostate cancer in a series of strokes. Uh, on July 23rd of this year. 2024. Yep. Okay. Uh, it was revealed that he had passed away at the age of 84. Oh, that sucks. Uh, he was found uh, to have died from prostate and colon cancer. Oh, not, not a good way to go. No. Michael Seed. 
he would be sentenced to 10 years. Now, the 10 years was five for the break-in and then five for another. So he had to serve them congruently, yeah. meaning together. Yeah. One right after another. Yeah, concurrently. Um, Concurrently, yes. sorry. Not congruently. No. Um. Yeah, so 10 years in prison, and that is where he actually is today. Um, since he was only sentenced to this term in 2018. So Jesus. The guy still has uh, another four more years. No, yeah. Four more years in prison? Fuck. Uh, John Collins. He would be sentenced to seven years, like mo- most, pe- most of them would. Uh, he would only serve uh, half a sentence and would be released in 2018. Okay. Daniel Jones. While I'm in custody awaiting trial, <laughs> he had a build of a guilt, built guilty conscience and felt that, you know, if he unburdened his conscience, he probably could get out of jail a lot sooner. Nope. <laughs> a lot, lot sooner. Uh, he claimed he wanted to quote unquote come clean mm. and mm. give back his share of the robbery. Uh, to that end, he wrote a letter to the media offering uh, to show police uh, where he uh, had hidden it. But when he was escorted to Edmonton uh, Cemetery in North London, he only showed them a small portion of his stash and lied under direct questioning when asked if he knew where any more loot had been buried. So wait, he stashed his shit in the cemetery? Yep. That's kind of fucked, man. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, and it so happens that about 65 feet away from where the, he showed them, uh, the police found the rest of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he had nothing left. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in... Well, as luck would have it. Again, that's why you split your shit up. Yeah. This is prepping 101. You don't you don't keep your entire stash in one place. Well, he didn't keep well, I mean, he didn't keep it in one grave. He kept it in a couple. You know, two different ones. Uh on July 18th actually, uh July not 18th, July of 2018, uh he would be given 3 years in j- in jail for, you know, as his sentence and well, he's out of prison now that's unfortunate yeah terry perkins he would be sentenced also to seven years but he would actually however die in prison in 2018 oh shit i mean none of of these guys should have died well none of these guys should have died in prison for the crime they committed they should have died in prison because they're old yeah because like you robbed a bank you didn't fucking hurt anybody whatever no all that shit's insured. Yeah. You know, um, but like, but it, then again, though, you're hitting um, safe deposit boxes. That's like a lot. Like a lot of people are putting like family heirloom jewelry and stuff like that in there. So fuck you for that. If you had just like straight up gone into this place and robbed it with with rifles or whatever, I, I have less of a problem with that than you stealing, you know, my fucking grandmother's jewelry. Yeah. You know, but again, you, you shouldn't die in prison for robbing a bank no. unless you are. A thousand years old when you robbed the bank. Yeah, well, he, then you he, have every right to die in prison. Well, they were uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, he would die in prison uh, in 2018 from natural causes. From what I read, he had. Um, I don't know if it was so much natural causes because he'd been having heart attacks while he was in prison, and was actually had been fitted with a uh, pacemaker. Okay, so uh, it could have been just that he his heart got. Gave yeah, out. Yeah, the fucking ticker quit. Yeah. You know, so, uh, moving on. Carl Wood. He would get six years in prison for his part of the in the heist. Uh, and he actually suffers from Crohn's disease and lives uh, on a disability allowance. Uh, that sucks. So he's just got, like, the so, shits all the time. Yeah, so I'm guessing he's probably out of uh, prison because since he's living off of disability. So, uh, I think they kind of let him out early. Or, well, six years. I mean, that's not very long. So he yeah. got out and... Uh, On parole or some shit. Yeah. Uh, William Lincoln. He would be sentenced to seven years for his part as the getaway driver. Mm, he yeah, served, fair uh, enough. He served all seven. Uh, Hugh Doyle. He's the electrician guy. Yeah. Plumber. 
uh, was found guilty of conspiracy to conceal, convert, or transfer criminal property and given uh, a suspended sentence for prison. Never went at all. Damn. Because they were like, okay, well, I mean, you didn't really do a ton of shit. You didn't steal any of it. No, you're just kind of yeah, part kind of the... Of, you kind of... Uh, you were... Um, you lent your place to uh, these guys to, to go to, to store their stuff. Good thing you didn't do it in California, though, because uh, you'd go to prison alongside them. Yeah. Because they have that whole, I don't remember in the name of the law, but um, if you're the... The getaway driver for a bank robbery, you can be, you'll be convicted for the bank robbery also, not just you know an accessory too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, now John Harbinson is another guy. Uh, he was accused of storing much of the stolen jewelry, gems, gold, uh, before actually returning it to the gang to be split up. He would actually be cleared of all charges because you know he's only storing it. Right. And it's only at his place. So. Yeah. Fair um, enough. So, it, like I said, this is going to be kind of a quick episode, not really all that long. Um, so, you know, half hour, quick one. I don't, you know, there wasn't much more. There was more to it, but it needed to be broken down. Um, so, it, it's kind of worth noting that only a third of the loot has actually that was actually taken from the heist. From those seventy nine boxes, mm-hmm. has ever been recovered? Yeah, that so, makes sense because the rest these guys are all fucking dead now, basically. So they'll never yeah. find it. Um, it's suspected that the rest of the gems, jewelry, and other items will never be found. Of course not. Um, no. Uh, now I have also um, have to mention that while watching you know, videos on this, one particular video, I think it was by the BBC. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, claimed, and I haven't heard this from, I didn't hear this from any other source, but this one source claimed that, uh, that inside said safety deposit box building, mm-hmm. institution, um, the organized crime syndicate that was in the area um, had some stuff in there. And, um... They kind of got mad at these guys. Who, well, they didn't know who it was at the time, but they got mad. And were like, you know, um, put a word out saying that, you know, whoever stole it needs to give it back. Now, yeah, okay. whether I know that if this is true or not, I have not a goddamn clue. Because who knows? You know, that I only heard it from that one source. Uh, not even your book that you gave me, Kevin. Yep actually had anything to do with it so said anything about them oh shit you know being involved or anything like that so maybe they were maybe they weren't i mean you know <laughs> yeah I mean, it's fair it's, it's kind and of again a... you can't get any more information because all these guys are fucking dead well most you know? of them are dead yeah some of them are couple, two of them yeah and, the uh, two that knew most of everything well no right uh, the other ringleaders are still alive oh you know, like seed and yeah, but they're not going to talk. There's no point. Oh no, of course not. Um, but yeah, that's that's the garden, a Hatton Garden uh, bank heist. I kind of thought it was uh, I kind of thought it was a regu- real real uh, interesting story of how you know a bunch of old guys could uh, you know, could get it one more go to uh, to go in, have the balls enough to go into a store, into a, a safety deposit location on, you know, and they picked the right time, too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> to go in, drill three holes, you know, attempt to push over a box, uh, a cabinet, get into it, can't do it, so they leave. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, I, honestly, I don't know of any other heist. I don't. I didn't really look, but I'm pretty sure I've never heard of one that so to this point that you know they some robbers would go in, go to rob it, can't finish, can't complete the job, have to leave, come back, complete the job, right? The next night, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's kind pretty of pretty impressive, a, yeah. Especially since you know these guys go to bed at fucking six thirty, of course, you know. 
you know, I mean, but also, you know, I think, you know, like I said, age, I think, uh, played a role in their getting caught. Because, oh, for sure. You know, if these guys had the brains they did when they were in their 30s, they would have pulled this off and not gotten caught. Probably, yeah. You know, and they probably also wouldn't have needed to go get another jack to push the thing over because they would have had enough upper body strength to just do it with a couple of them. Yeah, or if they had, like, you know, the good wherewithal, they would have uh, had, you know, younger guys with them yeah. to help them. Oh, that's what I'm saying, is if they were in their 30s, they would have knocked us out no problem. Oh, yeah, or just got some younger guys to go with them. You wouldn't need to, though, because they're younger. You're... You're no, in no, your no, 30s no, and saying, in good shape. You don't need to bring some fucking 18 year old now, like it, at their at their age that they were. At. Right, but what if I, they had brought younger guys, they would have, you know, probably would have been able to get it done that night. Yeah, but you got to remember, it's more mouths to feed when it comes to divvying shit up. True, and it's also younger guys that tend to open their mouths more often True. than old guys do. Even though these guys ran their mouths quite a bit too. So true, very much. You know, yeah. That is that is true, because they get, ran their mouse at the pub and got caught, you yep. know, <laughs> on surveillance. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's, you know, that's a uh, bank heist, and I hope everybody kind of likes it, you know, liked it, because I kind of thought it was kind of neat. Yeah, it was definitely a interesting story, for sure. Yeah. Um, and if you like interesting stories, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash dark windows podcast, where we're getting ready to record, um... Something that I found kind of interesting, um, and it kind of inspired me to look into some stuff for the, my next full episode, which will be in three weeks, because the next two weeks we're going to be doing road trip stuff um, in the form of North Carolina and North Dakota. Mm-hmm. Um, but this week's Patreon is going to be a lot of fun, and it's only $5 if you want to hear the extra episode, um, or if you just want to get the regular episodes a couple days early, it's a buck. But again, it also, if you pay the $5, you get early access and the bonus episode. So $5 is definitely the, the, the value to go for there. Um, so I think that is the way to do it. Um, but that's just me personally. And if you're looking to also save some money on some stuff, if you go over to studio.com and you grab some earbuds or some speakers, you throw them in your cart, put in Dark Windows 15 at checkout. Gets you 15% off your entire order. Um, and they actually ship pretty quickly considering they are in the middle of Europe. Technically, I guess it's not quite into like Asia yet because you're like right in that, oh, that you know, they're Western, they're Eastern Europe, you know. Sweden. Yeah, yeah, they, they ship out of like fucking Latvia though, is where the warehouse is. Every time I've ordered anything in the tracking, it, it starts off there, so. Well, that's further over. Yeah, that's yeah, like I'm saying, you know, Eastern Europe. Um, one of those, like, used to be and then possibly could be a Soviet country again. <laughs> uh, if, you know, we're intent on just paying for a fucking war to, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just tired of my taxes going up. <laughs> uh, anyway, so just because you can't see out into the dark doesn't mean the dark can't see into you. Bye-bye. Until next time.